Every day, foreigners coming here and boasting to their shareholders overseas about Guyana's world-class assets and how it will benefit them. While the palm tree and the cup fastened together, wrapped up with each other, pretending as if they are enemies, when they are actually twins, come from the same mother and father. Let me just show you people how deceitful and incompetent Barajagdeo is. He told us last week that Chevron by over his cooperation shares in the Starbuck block. All of you hear that. And how many billions of US dollars in assets them have to take care to, ta to handle an oil spill. I talked at length and played him for you people to hear him only Wednesday gone. The same Wednesday night, ExxonMobil said Chevron ain't even come in Guyana yet. It's a big ding-dong going on between Exxon and Chevron now. Uncle, it's so big that Exxon don't want them here. Exxon themselves want to buy over the Hess Corporation shares. And I'm ready to go to the highest court in the world to make sure that Chevron don't come to get the sweetness of Guyana. How you like that one, bro? Uncle, are you see what's going on in Guyana with Yavel? Y'all continue sitting down in your beds. Teachers in the streets. Children can't go to school. And three white people fighting over a thing. <laughs> oh. Oh. Diana proper sweet. Girl, you're so sweet. <laughs> They're coming from all over the world for fight for you. That same Chevron uncle wants to buy into the Starbrook block. They already tell their shareholders they are eyeing higher returns for them from Guyana's world-class assets over oil. Kevin, you got a headline? Put it up, let them see it online. That was our lead story yesterday uncle. This company didn't even finalize the deal to buy into Guyana as yet. And Jack Deo, when asked, where is the 20 billion assets he said Exxon have to take care of an oil spill, he counted Chevron assets. <laughs> he counted the people assets, what even they in Guyana. Could you play that thing? Let, let, me just, let me just refresh the memory on it. Last week you said Exxon has $20 billion in assets out there which can be sold in, to take care of an oil spill in case, in the event that it occurs. Can you list the assets they have that equals the value of this $20 billion? If I got to list the assets of Exxon, have you read the balance sheet? Have you gone to the financial statements and look at the balance sheet? You should look at that. You should look at that. I have to list every asset they have and, and, and considering something else. We talk about the book value of the assets. Let me just give you an idea. Do you, you've heard about the merger between Chevron and Hess, the announced merger. Do you know what the value of that, that Hess the Hess company was valued at? Do you know? You don't know. It's $60 billion. $60 billion. 
So their Hess assets are made up mainly of 30% shares in Guyana and uh, some assets in the Permian area. So take half of it. Say of their global assets, half are in Guyana. It's much more than half. But say half of the 60 billion is $30 billion. That's a valuation. That effectively means that a 70% of the remaining assets, crudely, would be about $70 billion. So in the market, the market value. Kevin, cut that thing. Kevin, cut that thing. Cut that thing, Kevin. Cut that thing, Kevin. In short, Uncle, all the assets here boast about with Chevron there. Chevron ain't even come into Guyana yet. And he was telling the girl, if you know, who read balance sheet and financials. I don't think you people really understand what Jack Dave is saying to this country. You whole house in danger there, uncle. That can burn flat. And left everybody on the road. That's what he's actually saying. And... And you, daddy, going after the man, instead, or I should say, instead you, daddy, going after the man who can cause your house to burn down, to pay you in the event of that happens. He boasting about Glenn Lalwell in charge, tongue. Wanna got nothing to do with you, house. That's what Jack did do there just now. He boasting on Chevron, who don't even come in Guyana. When the girl asked him about Exxon Mobil assets. Mm -hmm. Chevron yes. You see how this man a lie and a deceive this country week after week? With his dirty, nasty tongue? Hmm? George tongue. When I got nothing to do with your house. That's what Jack Dave is doing to us. This is the tricks, uncle. The con game. Jack Dave pulling on Guyana when it comes to Exxon Mobil assets. Exxon Mobil can do whatever they want. And he defends them. Even if he got to talk what makes him look dumb, dotish and dunce. He just don't care. Jack Dale have reached a stage where he has no respect for himself anymore. What he says and what he does when it comes to eggs on mobile. This man have no shame. And Aubrey Norton, who took root in the PPP cup, has reached the same stage. He too, when ExxonMobil name is involved, or the oil sector comes into play, does everything and anything to avoid speaking about what's going on in the oil business. He, just like Jack Dale, can't talk straight, can't pee straight when it comes to ExxonMobil. Honestly, uncle, honestly, auntie, I am so embarrassed deep in my soul when I listen to these two great Guyanese at their press conferences weekly. You know, I was too tired yesterday to sit and listen to them. Quite frankly, my stomach is overflowing with the garbage that comes out their mouth every week. Every foreigner fighting and boasting about the Guyanese people's riches. These two great men fighting over teachers' salary increase. 
what you must cut and what you mustn't cut from the borrow money in the budget. Whether teachers will be paid or not be paid during the protest action. This is what comes out both of them out. This country has trillions of US dollars in assets that foreigners fighting over who will get all of it. And these two bright men Abri Norton and Barra Jagdeo fighting over a couple stinking cent for teachers at their press conferences every week. Kevin, you sure you're going to vote for me? Well, if you're not going to vote for me, you and your children will take exactly what these two schemers doing to you and this entire country at the moment. It pains my heart when I read what one teacher said to the government. And I quote that teacher word for word, uncle. That teacher said, How can I worry about other people's children and mine are in shambles? Let me repeat what the teacher said. How can I worry about other people's children when mine are in shambles? Uncle, auntie, those of you who want teachers to go back to work should answer that question. When Jack Day was asked how he can live on $85,000 a month, he told a reporter he doesn't have expenses. That question should be asked to the palm tree, to uncle. How teachers can live on $85,000, brother? Then I see the judge, Justice Kisun. That ordered the teachers be paid strike or no strike? Hmm. The chief education officer write a sneaky, a slicky statement to the teachers. Telling them they will not be paid. That statement reached to Justice Kisun. And Justice Kisun immediately... Hauled him, hauled the chief education officer before him and said, Why are you going against the court's ruling? You know what the chief education officer tell the judge uncle? No, sir, I am sorry. I made a mistake and I withdraw the statement, which he did. This is what your loving and caring leaders instructing senior public servants to do. Trying to intimidate the teachers. Although the court rule, they must be paid. The leaders believe they are bigger than the law. That them is the only court that counts and to hell with anybody else. Well, Uncle, Justice Kisun stood his ground and quietly dealt with the matter. He even went further and appointed two senior counsels to mediate between the government and the teachers' union to bring this matter to some sort of resolution. Solution, Uncle. <laughs> Uncle, this is the second case where Justice Kisun stood his ground and stand up for justice and fair play. He is the judge that ordered ExxonMobil to provide Guyana with that full parent company guarantee. And Barat de Jagdeo get the EP and the Attorney General to join with Exxon to appeal that decision. 
which is still to be heard. I don't know if that judge does drink, but cheers, Justice Kisun. Cheers from Glen Lal and I think Trickwater of Guyana. You're a man of my heart and we need more like you around. The Palm Tree Oil and Gas Committee, I don't think they're clear on where they stand on full parent company guarantee. <laughs> this is Guyana. Beautiful Guyana. You know the song, Kevin? Oh, Guyana. Beautiful Guyana. Free Guyana. We should be singing Free Guyana. Free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free Guyana from the cup and the palm tree. When these two great leaders, Barra Jagdeo and Aubrey Norton, done with Guyana, the cup will have no handle, no bottom, and the palm tree will have no branches and no root. <laughs> Monday Sky Show News. You don't have to buy it, Uncle. You can go online. It's free. We carried a story where one of the wealthiest men on earth, a man named Warren Buffett, sell out his shares he had in the iPhone company, Apple. One of the most profitable companies on earth, Apple. <laughs> the man sell out his shares. Not, not, to, not to buy shares in Guyana's oil basin. But to buy more shares in Guyana's oil basin. You hear that, Kevin? Put it up online. Put the story up online. Let them see it. <laughs> you hear that? The richest man in the world. In the world. Sell out his shares. In the company that makes the, the iPhone. To buy share, not to buy shares in Guyana, but to buy more shares in Guyana oil basin. <laughs> oh boy. Oh uncle. Them already own Guyana short and pans. Now they want to own the, the underwear. So they got all of you how they want. Kevin, this man Warren Buffet is considered in the world today as one of the wealthiest investors of all times. When he put his hand and money on something anywhere, it only flourishes. Uncle and auntie, business people around the world, billionaires and millionaires, does watch to see where this man put his money and then follow. Them see the great men and women of Guyana. Yes, the great men and women of Guyana, our politicians, open their feet wide. With the assets of this country. So the big boys of the world say, let me go help myself. The biggest payday presently on earth is in Guyana. So let's go take it with both hands. Let me ask this, uncle. What coming in your hands? What coming in your hands, auntie? Hundred dollar a day for the pension has increased. And teachers crying out for a livable wage. One great man of Guyana, Abri Compton Nothing, is saying to cut the borrow money set aside in the budget for exercise books, textbooks, 
printing materials, fuel, lubricants, and miscellaneous expenses. Pot refreshments and snacks, so on and so on, to pay the teachers a livable wage. <laughs> While Bara Jagdeo, the greater man, telling the nation yesterday at his press conference, wherever the court ruling is done, he can take back the teachers' money for the days they've been on strike. <laughs> you know the song, la 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 la. La 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 Hmm, it's a nice song. What is great man said? What is great man Jack Dave is doing to the teachers? Uncle, you know what he's doing there? He's not only intimidating them, but pushing them back in the classrooms to work for that slave salary. Now I want to tell you all something else. These are the type of tactics oil companies have used in several third world countries over the years. They line the pockets of the politicians. Then they create chaos and confusion in the country. And while the citizens fighting between themselves, they are busy fetching away all the wealth of that nation. While the leaders celebrating with their loot. This is what is playing out presently in Guyana. With the teachers and the hungry people. It now starts, Uncle and Auntie. Politicians living with milk and honey, and the poor people are forced to live like dogs and cats, running everywhere and anywhere looking for a meal. This movie has played out throughout Africa and Asia. Now they bring that movie in Guyana. I don't have to show you. I don't have to tell you what went on in Angola, in Nigeria, Papua New Guinea, Equatorial Guinea, Ghana, in Chad, in Libya, and so many of other African and Asian countries. The leaders, their families and their friends are living the life while 90% of the population of each country is struggling to get a meal, to get a clean cup of water. Some countries, wealth has disappeared, while others' wealth has evaporated like dew in the morning sun. I am begging you people, uncle and auntie, Guyana already on that road towards poverty and tragedy. Please, the whole world is boasting about Guyana's assets, Guyana's GDP, Guyana's economy, Guyana's prosperity for them. Our palm tree leaders saying we are bound by sanctity of contract. And the leader of the milking cup is threatening teachers to take away their pay for striking. He is a terror. Uncle, he wants to look like a terror when dealing with his own brothers and sisters. But a tadpole or a mouse when he has to stand up and fight against the foreign companies for the betterment of this country and its people. He comes over as a powerhouse when dealing with the Guyanese people and the opposition. But he is an armed house 
when he has to roll up his sleeve, when he has to deal with Routledge, Woods, Darren Woods and the others. Norton, on the other, other hand, with his oil and gas team rolling up their sleeves and only know to make pronouncements, telling Guyana nobody must put words in their mouth. <laughs> nobody must put words in their mouth. What to say, how to say, and when to say. What he wants to say to the people to get more out of this oil well. He will choose his own words and speak when he's ready. Hmm. He was responding to the Trinidad Prime Minister who tell the oil and gas conference held last week he willing and ready to help Guyana renegotiate Exxon contract so that the people of Guyana can benefit more. <laughs> oh. If Jack Dave and Norton think they will make Guyana into Africa and Asia, they got to think again. Or I should say they lie. Them lie. Kevin, you say you're going to vote for me? What do you mean you're going to think about it? What? Kevin now tell me you're going to think about if you're going to vote for me. Yeah? Okay. Ah, uh, two fingers you have to give them? All right. Well, I'm going to take my hat out of the race then, man. For the time being, hoping you and the nation wake up. All right? That fair? Mm -hmm. Uncle and auntie, these great leaders in the richest country on earth today per person, mm -hmm. I take loan after loan, week after week, months after months, year after year, to keep this country afloat and have wealth that ten generations can spend or live out. I am feeling sick, Kevin. Should I stop the program and start running for office now? <laughs> Oh boy. Kevin. Sunday gone. Uncle, Sunday gone. Government signed 150 million US loan agreement with the Inter American Development Bank, the IDB. Put it up there, Uncle. 150 million US. For build six schools in the interior and fix up 19 more. Uncle and auntie, the very next day, Monday morning, put a headline up for me, please. Another 120 million Canadian loan packed from Canada. Them said this 120 million Canadian is going to help support human trafficking. And strengthen, and strengthen <laughs> the system they have for the pensioners in Guyana. <laughs> My God. The very next day, uncle, after Monday. I don't know what day is. After Monday, I don't know what is the next day. England. Put it up though. Put it up. I don't know the day. England opened the bank for Guyana. You didn't hear what I said, Kevin. England opened the bank for Guyana. To borrow two times more than what we could have borrowed from them before. We could only borrow 750 million British pounds. Hmm. <laughs> Your aisle... Your aisle where you're getting crumbs from, they want to put a man on that too. By throwing more money at Guyana. Yes. You know what I did, Uncle? They moved that 750 million to 2.1 billion British pounds. And guess what, Kevin? 
I am betting my last dollar. These leaders we have will open their foot to grab what they can. Guyana don't have to beg anymore for money. We are seen now as a prostitute where everybody wants a piece of we at all times. Yeah, they want a piece of we. All at the same time. Giving we money. Giving we money, uncle and auntie. That can only buy a panty and a brazier. Hmm. You know, uncle, let me repeat. I have seen this movie many, many times before. Played out around the world. We are colored people. Hmm. Wisdom is doing to safeguard and protect this nation of its resources. I am beginning to get tired, not worn out, but tired of repeating these great leaders. These great leaders not capping the interest rates. These great leaders not collecting a single cent taxes. These great leaders not properly checking the inflated bills, expenses thrown at us by ExxonMobil as production costs, exploration costs, and most importantly, them oil project costs. I got to repeat these things for your head, uncle. Where are these great leaders taking this country that's the big question and why you people are not in the streets with those teachers is why i need uncle spectacles to see what's in front of you or i want walking sticks to see what is coming to you before you join those teachers in the streets. Hmm? You want walking stick and spectacles to protect your assets that can give you and ten generations a good life? Is that what you guys looking for? Oil spill protection both of those great leaders can't secure this country and its people with. Aren't they now? Both of them, including Norton. Both of them, including Norton Island Gas Committee, doesn't want to hear the word renegotiation. All of them hiding behind sanctity of contract. Pumping 650,000 barrel of oil a day. At $80 barrel teachers. Take out $20 barrel for production costs. He left with $60 barrel. Multiply that by the $650. You're getting 39 million US a day, uncle. Guyana share, share should have been half of that per day. This is left out. What a thief in every day, uncle. And let me repeat. I, Glenn Lal, believe they're thiefing another 39 million a day without our own meters at the pump. And we have teachers in the streets protesting for a livable wage of 85 million US according to Jack Dale. Guyana giving away more than 40 million US to ExxonMobil a day. And got teachers in the streets begging for 50% increase for the whole year, which is only 85 million dollar body. Which headmaster can beat that? Only the chief headmaster, the oil minister can beat that. The man who jagged got hiding from the press. 
I am so sorry for that headmaster. The man don't answer question and he don't, he don't hold press conference. <laughs> These great leaders, not correcting, fixing or addressing anything when it comes to ExxonMobil for lift this country out of poverty. But guess what, uncle? <laughs> guess what, auntie? Kemraj Ramjatan, the great leader of the AFC, was in parliament the other day telling the government and the nation he wants to see paper trail of the billions the government set him share out to compensate the farmers and the fisher folks. Put up the headline for me, please. Let those online see it. <laughs> Opposition wants paper trail on distribution of billions in cash grants. <laughs> then, this other great leader, Aubrey Compton Norton, write a letter to the Auditor General calling on him to audit the government public spendings, including the cash grants. President Ali Pet projects. So on and so on and so on. But please put up that headline too. The nation needs to see these things. They need to see what these leaders are focusing on and what they're calling the Auditor General to investigate. Norton said in his letter, in that same letter, the opposition received many complaints from citizens about distribution of the cash grants. So on and so on and so on. And in light of that, he wants the Auditor General to carry out an audit to ensure transparency and accountability. Uncle and Auntie, I'll tell you this. Glenlal fully agree with those two great leaders, Norton and Ramchatan. All of us want accountability and transparency. <laughs> All we want. When governments spend money, especially cash money, oh man, we must ensure that they mean thief out trick water of it. And that the money really went to the people who should get it. I agree. I fully agree with Norton and Ramjatan. But I have this for both of them. The media, uncle and auntie, the media has been exposing so much skullduggery on a daily basis which involves billions upon billions of our oil profits with ExxonMobil. I never hear Ramjatan said anything about that. I never see nor hear Aubrey Norton write a letter to the Auditor General asking him to investigate these issues so that we can have transparency and accountability. But Aubrey Norton can write letter about citizen complaints about the distribution of cash grants. Are you help me to understand this, Uncle and Auntie? Help me, please. I need help. Guyana only did two audits on ExxonMobil. There is a backlog of audits to be done. The first audit, the people found out ExxonMobil robbed us 214 million US. We have been talking about this how many months now? A long time. Up to yesterday, uncle, when Jack Day was asked by my reporter about that 214 million US. He couldn't give a clear answer to where we stand with that money. That 214 million 
is almost three years of the teachers 50 percent salary they're demanding to go back to, to school for that jack they were norton them can't fix and to know but let's drop that at the side for now uncle let's move to the second audit oh papa <laughs> The second up audit was carried out and the auditors discovered that ExxonMobil hunch we front, dig out we back, scrape we face, cut out we nose with robberies and skullduggeries. Allow me to list some of the things that Exxon rob us with in the US billions. This is not teacher money they rob we here uncle. They rob us the entire public servants payroll. Now all these all these robberies were big and bold headlines in the Kaicho news almost daily. I will list them for you. I will talk about them before. I have talked about them before. But I just want to refresh your memories. The auditor's uncle found ExxonMobil use 323 million US from our oil profits to buy vehicles which are being used in Kaichur and Kanji oil blocks. You hear that? 323 million US to buy vehicles that are being used in the Kaichur and Kanji oil blocks. That money alone is half of the, of the public servant's payroll, yearly payroll. Aubrey Norton didn't see that in the press. To write the Auditor General to investigate that. He write letter to see how the cash grant was shared to the farmers and the fisher folks. <laughs> Ramjatan Nam and Jagdeo Dum on that. Me and you got a 50-50 business. Me take you profit and buy vehicles. For use in another private business me got with another friend. And these great leaders silent on that on to this day. Let's move on again. The auditors also discovered that ExxonMobil had Guyana bill for 753 million US for foreign workers here and abroad. And the auditors them said they are clueless as to what the foreign workers did in Guyana. <laughs> you could be the one, Josh, uh, Kevin. 753 million US is almost one and a half years salary for all the public servants. Norton didn't write letter to the Auditor General on that. But he's write letter to see how the cash grant was shared to the farmers and the fisher folks. Ramjatan Dum and Jagdeo Nam. ExxonMobil brazenly used we oil profits to pay drill ships to stand by. You hear me? Just to stand by for Kaichur and Kanji oil blocks. No figure was put there. But I could tell you guys, uncle and auntie, them drill ships is like $500,000 a day US rental. Monthly, they sit down. <laughs> Buddy, you know what money you're talking about, eh, Kevin? Hmm? That is not a whole year public servant salary. That is years 
of public servant salaries. Again, Norton, Norton didn't write a letter to the Auditor General on that. But he wrote a letter to see how the cash grants were shared out to the farmers and the fisher folks. While Ramjatan Nam and Jack Deo dumb on that. The auditors told us in their report, Uncle, that we get a glimpse of. <laughs> that same report was submitted to the government. Uncle, they found out that the ExxonMobil slapped Guyana with 58.5 million US in COVID bills for 2020 alone. Remember that word alone? For 2020, 2021, 2022, we ain't see the bill as yet. That 58.5 million US dollar is actually the 50% increase the teachers on the streets asking for uncle. And guess what? We didn't see Aubrey Norton write letter to the Auditor General asking for an explanation but he can write letter to see ask the auditor general to see how the cash grant was shared out to the farmers and the fisher folks and let me repeat ramjatannam and jagdeo dom on this exxon mobile bill guyana you put up all these headlines let us see them throw them up online la, and see it man ExxonMobil Bill Guyana, 10.3 million US for drivers, 2.2 million <laughs> in school fees for their children, for their children. Again, no letter was written for this by Aubrey Norton. Their children's school, their children's school and closed down. Their children are being well taught in school with our oil profits, paying the foreign and local teachers to keep educating their children. Man, you should clap your hands for that. We are ill money. They're, those teachers are well paid from your oil money so they don't have to strike. Norton didn't write a letter to the Auditor General for that. But he wrote a letter to see how cash grants are shared to the farmers and the fisher folks. ExxonMobil use oil profits to splurge on holiday gifts for security guards to escort executives and pay, pay the security for expats, family, fundy. <laughs> no figure was put on that. And that was also in the U.S. millions. Exxon spent money on Christmas cookout, Zumba, and yoga classes. For their foreign employees. Exxon also spent money to make films and documentaries about its unprecedented success in Guyana. Use we oil profits to pay for puppet shows and go kart rentals for their children. Then took we oil profits in the US. Millions to promote themselves all across this country with billboards and so on. <laughs> the auditors didn't disclose the figures they spent on those things. And Norton didn't write a letter to the Auditor General demanding to see the figures. But he writing a letter to the Auditor General to investigate how the government distribute the cash grants to the farmers and fisher folks. <laughs> mm. 
The Auditor General them said they couldn't check expenses. They could not check the expenses for over 1,000 travel records for ExxonMobil. And again, we didn't see Norton write any letter on that. The auditors them said they were unable to determine how much ExxonMobil charged Guyana for dumping that toxic water into the ocean every day and every night. <laughs> Uncle, this one needs a little explanation. That is the produced water that comes up with the oil and gas. After they burn the gas and throw the oil into the tanker, that produced water has to be processed before it's being dumped in the Atlantic Ocean to capture the poisonous substance that came up with it. And of course, to take out the little more oil that would have passed the tank. Mm -hmm. That is what cost us money. And that is what Jack Deumek laughed story about at his press conference. ExxonMobil charge in Guyana. Yes, auntie. We oil profits are coming out to pay Exxon fat, fat US dollars in the millions for them to treat that water. And like I said, capture the poisonous substance in it before they dump it into the Atlantic Ocean. That is what the auditor is talking about. Exxon taking out we money for that. And Guyana doesn't know. That's a special contract to do the piece of work on the rig itself, on the platform itself, sorry. But the auditors didn't see a figure put to that. And guess what, uncle? Barra Jack Dave is numb and dumb on that. And Aubrey Norton saw that and didn't write no letter. To the Auditor General to explain it. <laughs> oh boy. Barra Jack Deo, nominate to. He just make laugh story at his press conferences, uncle, when you ask him question. Kevin, you know the most sickening part of this whole ep episode is what? Barra Jack Deo is deliberately hiding that full audit report from the Guyanese people. Because what I mentioned there, Uncle and Auntie, is just the tip of the iceberg that we were able to capture from the report submitted to him. He doesn't want us to see the full report. He was asked, he was asked after the Kaicho News reported all those things, if he read that report and he told the reporters no. How do you like that, uncle? This is the man heading the oil sector. He can't tell us until now about the 214 million US. He can't tell us he cannot tell us the oil profit, how it's being spent out there, or how they're being spent here, there, and everywhere. That's the man in charge. <laughs> oh. And he's telling us he didn't read the report. Then turn around and hiding it from us. Uncle, if I really understand this man Barra Jack Deo and Aubrey Compton Norton, the way Glenn Lal does, 
And you wouldn't even want to look in the direction. Much less to stain your fingers for them. Only yesterday, Bara Jagde was asked by my reporter about that said report. You want to hear what he said, Uncle? Play him, Kevin. Play him, let them hear him. Good afternoon, Dr. Jagde. I'm sure I'm about your future news. Um, the government has announced plans to proceed with a third audit of the expenses in the Starbrook block. Um, but when will the first one done by IHS market be made public? And can you give us an update on the status of the 240 million, million US dollar cost that is in dispute? Well, I've answered this question many times. I said any document that is in the public domain or with the GRA, the GRA could choose to make those public or not, the audits. Okay, that's one. I said that historically. I think most people by now have the audits. Okay, that's one. Are you hear how this man a think and a stutter? The Guyana Revenue Authority, GRA could choose to make it public or not. You hear his words? <laughs> he, the boss, does not want us to see those reports. So he threw it over to Godfrey Stacia at GRA. And when you ask GRA, them tell you they can't release it. What he said, Kevin? We have the reports already. No, Mr. Jagdeo, we don't. Nobody has them. If it, if it hasn't been released, then how can we have them, Mr. Jagdeo? It's a little peak. Kaichor News get. Of a part of it. That's how we know that all those billions Exxon siphon off. From we oil profits. Play on his play on his next answer. Secondly, you know there was the difference in in opinion. We've made it clear that there is a process through which you you finalize this, which would ultimately be arbitration. That's a final element. You can appoint an industry expert, but if that fails you go to arbitration, and that's where we are. So there is an intractable difference between us now. We, over the full $214 million of expenses. So that will finally be, have to be resolved, not through a bilateral process any longer, but through that uh, third-party involvement, which is provided. I'm begging you people, I have been begging you people to please listen to Aubrey Norton and Jack Dale press conferences. Y'all would see and hear the things these people tell in Guyana. Jack Dale had to be asked about the 214 million US. The GRA said it's more than 215. Jack Dale got to be asked about that report. And where Guyana stands with that 214 million US before he can finally tell us we have to go to arbitration to settle this robbery. Hmm. Robbery going on in this oil sector from day one. This man doesn't say nothing at his press conferences. He got to be asked. Play on. The second audit they would still have to now, when written to, they would have to now give explanations for the areas identified. For example, the auditors said that there were commingling expenditures for the Stabrook block, Kaichor, and Kanji block. They have to demonstrate that they were not doing so, that they're not putting expenses on the Stabrook block where, where the services were given to the Kanji and Kaicho block. There are lots of other features. So that's, in a nutshell, arbitration. In a nutshell. 
This man is never clear. Never clear when, 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 when it comes to ExxonMobil. Sometimes the reporters, I can't understand what this man has been saying. With simple, straightforward question. Now, he has to be asked what the second audit reveal about ExxonMobil and we are the prophet's uncle. This man, the second audit reveal, the second audit reveal that ExxonMobil used our oil profits and buy vehicles. They pay foreign workers. They pay for Zumba and yoga classes. They make films and documentaries. They pay for Christmas parties, COVID bills, drivers, school fees, outings, gift vouchers, rental of drill ships, working in his oil blocks. Sorry, not his oil blocks. The Kaichoro Kanji oil blocks. Them said a gift to people they don't know. Exxon take me money, spend it in traveling expenses, pay for escorts of their employees. And you heard what Jagdeo telling that reporter? We may have to go to arbitration for these things too. Brothers and sisters of this country. Are you really understand what is going on in Guyana with that oil business and ExxonMobil? ExxonMobil robbing Guyana every day and night. Barat Jagdeo and all of them knows that. Not telling this country a word. And when the auditors discover only some of it, we may have to go to arbitration. Then turn around, hiding the audit reports with its skullduggeries from us. You have any more? Play on. Um, just to be clear, the, um, we have been trying to get these documents from GRA, but up to now it's, you know, we, we're not getting it. And it's right. kind of unfair for, you know, the people to be okay. left in the All dark, right. knowing how um, your company is spending. You got the second audit, though. You got the second one. All right. So if you get the second one, you could get the first one. Okay. And you uh, get the first one uh, and, the, and that one. Right. But it's kind of difficult. Probably yeah, that could one put in a word for Because it. that one was done by Apnu. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you here, the man? Are you here, this con man? Hmm? You get a second one, and the first one was done by Apnew. Uncle and Auntie, let me repeat the full report, the full report of the second one that he claimed we have or the public have. Nobody has it. And the first one is still in his position, uncle. But, but he wants to blame the PNC. Are you heard him? Like if the PNC take the report and carry it to them house, sleeping with it under the mattress. Have you heard him, uncle? None of these reports this man wants us to see. He doesn't want us to see the magnitude of skullduggery going on with ExxonMobil and Guyana's oil profits. I swear to God Almighty, uncle and auntie, them banners running this oil business worse than how the African and Asian leaders run their countries with oil. And I am saying tonight, 
I am seriously thinking about entering this political race for one reason and one reason only. To put them all where they belong and put this country with our resources in the right or on the right road. But I wouldn't give me that finger. Some of y'all might want to give me the middle finger, which I frighten. The people who love that, y'all not giving them it. So I'll stay out, stay on the sidelines and watch Norton, watch Jagdeo, watch Ramjatan, and that Dr. Ali give her a dim finger. And with that, I say good night.